Hello everyone, this is John from Compass Rose Bushcraft and I wanted to uh, post a video today that I, I hope will be just in many respects just kind of fun but uh, a little tongue-in-cheek but also somewhat serious. I, I want to do a little uh, video on, um, uh, on what I'm calling knife pairings, uh, the combination of knives that I tend to carry. Um, and I change them up depending on what it is I'm going to be doing and the kinds of things I'm going to need from them. Um, and I don't always pair them exactly as I'm going to show, but my default is the shirt pairings I'm going to show you. Um, I almost always carry uh, two knives um, when I'm paddling or hiking, uh, unless I'm doing really lightweight hiking, in which case I replace most of that with a Swiss Army knife that has a... Um, a cutting blade and a saw blade on it because that's really light um, or alternatively I carry a, a Mora Garberg partially because it's stainless steel the one I have and uh, is resistant to rust and weather and whatnot and I just slip it on the outside of my pack but when I'm going for a hike but not doing a lot of distance and I want to set up uh, a campsite in the bush or if I'm going on a paddling trip or indeed if I'm hiking just say in some hills near us and I'm wearing my uh, utility kilt and, and uh, just going for a long day hike I also have um, uh, some knives that I take so that I have uh, those for a little campfire or a, a luncheon or whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to show all of that to you. Um, the, the, uh, the, there's a lot of lore in bushcraft and survival circles around one is none and two is one. Uh, I don't carry more than one knife because of that. Um, I carry them because each of the knives has its own intention and utility. So I tend to carry a general usage knife uh, for on my hip when I'm on the hike and so on, but in my pack somewhere will be one um, that is more dedicated toward the kind of bushcraft stuff I may want to do on a campsite. Um, also, the bushcraft knives tend to be better, for example, at striking a ferro rod than my general usage knives, whose spines tend to be a little more rounded. Anyway, um, let me show you the, the, the knives. I've laid them out and I'll talk you through what it is I have and what it is I do. Uh, and at the end of the uh, table I have them laid out on. I also tend when I'm uh, canoe camping or hike camping to, to uh, carry uh, some larger cutting uh, tools. So I have uh, an axe and a folding buck saw and whatnot that I carry and I'll show all of that too because that would normally be strapped to my pack if it's in the canoe or um, they carried in a small backpack. I have a, a small saw and, and um, the tomahawk I carry um, if I'm not going great distances but need something but don't want the weight of, say, the full-size axe. Anyway, in a moment or two, I'll, uh, I'll show you all of that. So uh, these are um, uh, my variety of knives that I have and, and carry, and I believe that I have shown all but one of these in previous videos, but now I'm going to show the ways in which the, I combine them for various reasons. So the first two knives here are the ones I tend to carry with me when I am canoe camping. Um, the, the first of them, of course, is my Groman um, number one Russell knife. This has been my main knife for, uh, I guess, now over 40 years. It's a general purpose knife, although it was originally, I, I gather, designed with uh, hunting and skinning and whatnot in mind. But this uh, cuts rope, uh, prepares food, um, is always on my hip in the canoe, and uh, its dangler sheath, uh, um, I find, um, is very useful because it uh, gets out of the way quickly and easily if I'm, when I'm getting in and out of the canoe. I've never had it tangle on anything or catch on anything. And uh, it's just been a, a wonderful companion knife all of these years. Um, but um, when I get to the campsite, I will have a bushcraft knife of some kind, and usually it's this one. And uh, this is the Triple X Bushman. And uh, it uh, has now had a reasonable amount of usage, and uh, it's got a lovely 90 degree spine, great for striking a ferro rod. And it has the Scandi grind, which does an amazing job on notches and uh, general bushcraft kinds of tasks. So with the combination of these two knives, I know that I have one that I um, will have at my side in the canoe and uh, just general portaging and whatnot. 
and then one that does some very specific tasks once I get to the campsite. And those are the two knives that I generally put together if I'm going you know, on a canoe camping trip. Next to that um, is my Groman number no. 4 and my Sable neck knife from Triple X. Um, the Groman number no. 4 is their survival knife and I did a video on that earlier so you can take a look on my site and you'll see that I have reviewed this knife. But this has got a, a, a lovely weight to it. I can do light chopping with this. I can do most of the same kinds of things around food preparation, uh, some batoning, um, and uh, I, it's a great knife to have on your hip if you're going for a long afternoon's walk or hike or something along that line. And um, you uh, may want to stop and set up a little camp for an hour or two. Um, and it's a, just a good heavy-duty knife. It's comfortable in the hand. Uh, you can grip back on the handle or up close if you want to do some really good close work. Um, but if you're going to do fine work, again, something like notching or whatever, um, I tend then to carry along on when in my day pack um, this little uh, sable neck knife from Triple X. And again, it has the scandi grind, it has the 90 degree spine, so it does a great job on ferro rods. Um, and uh, again, I reviewed this. One of my first videos actually was the review of this knife where I did a fair amount of bushcraft stuff, including making um, a uh, birch broom and uh, um, a, a notch uh, tri stick and whatnot. But these are two lovely companions together. The one heavy duty workhorse that does most tasks and the little neck knife that then does the fine work um, of uh, uh, cleaning out notches and uh, even drilling some holes if you want to put a hole into the stick um, uh, on a campsite or um, for fun I have made figure four traps and this little knife does a great job of that. Um, the next knives over are my knives that I have if I'm out for a day hike and I'm wearing my utility kilt and I uh, have the Cathmore knife that I did the review of earlier in the year um, that um, I can carry on my hip and um, this has a lovely scandi grind um, it's a good heavy knife it can do batoning but it also has a great 90 degree spine for striking a ferro rod um, and um, uh, it's got a lovely weight in the hand for doing that kind of work. I have certainly done some batoning with it. Uh, and even because it's very similar in size to the Groman number no. 4 as a, um, a, as a kind of a, almost a survival knife. It will do some, it'll do batoning really well um, and is just a, a really wonderful knife to hold in the hand. Um, this year when I had it out, um, it uh, unknown to me, it got some splatter from, I think that was sap from a tree, and when I got home it had some rust spots, and I worked on those with some oil, and and uh, they're starting to, I guess it really is just starting to have a bit of a, a patina, but uh, hopefully I can keep those oiled and prevent them from um, getting any worse. But again, that's the, the, the main knife I would carry on my hip. And then I have this lovely little handmade scheme do. This is made by a, a local knife maker from the Wilno area of Ontario, um, the Grant Fraser Knives. And uh, it's uh, intended to be somewhat decorative, but also quite practical. Uh, the scheme do can be used uh, uh, when I'm out for a walk uh, to do some food preparation. It's a stainless steel blade. Um, it's decorative, but it's also quite functional, and that's the second knife I carry if uh, that's where I'm, the kind of thing I'm doing and where I'm going and what I'm wearing. And uh, it's a very, very comfortable little knife to hold in your hand, but I wouldn't do anything very heavy with that. Then, whenever I'm out, I almost always try to carry some um, larger cutting tools so that when I get to a campsite I have the ability to prepare firewood and whatnot. And I'll show you what I carry, the variety of things I carry um, to, to be companion to these knives. So the first thing is the equipment that I carry when I am 
uh, canoe camping, and that is almost always my um, Oxhead um, axe. That's a German-made axe, I believe. And then it's a, quite an old axe. It was a gift to me from a, an old trapper that I knew. Uh, handmade ironwood handle on it, and uh, it's uh, about, uh, it's a quite a light axe, but it does a wonderful job of the kind of um, the trimming and splitting you need to do on a campsite. And a more recent acquisition, this is a Canadian-made folding buck saw by Esker, a Canadian company out of Toronto. And I hope to do a review of this at some point when I've had more of a chance to use it. I used it recently this year to cut up some rubble from a tree in our backyard, um, but not enough that I would feel comfortable doing a review on it. But those are the two things that you'll almost always find in my canoe pack. If I'm doing a slightly lighter camping trip, and uh, this would be true of the um, hiking trip I took on the Pine Trails uh, um, hiking trip in Algonquin Park, I will carry the small uh, pocket boy um, saw made by Sulky, and I have uh, had some chance to use that, and it's for its size, it's actually quite a beast and does a, a great job, although of course the size of wood that you can cut with it is somewhat limited. And then I carry this a tomahawk because it's a fairly light implement to carry. And uh, again, on that uh, camping trip on the um, Pine Trails uh, hiking trail in Algonquin Park, um, it uh, did a great job on the campsite of just splitting some small wood to use as my evening campfire. And it's uh, fairly easy to carry or you can take it apart and break it up and put it in different parts of the pack. It's been a great little tool that I've enjoyed using on many occasions. Um, and as an alternative, again, depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going, I also have my um, Bushery by XXX that I also reviewed on my site. And uh, I have really enjoyed using this uh, Kukri style blade. Comfortable in the hand, you can choke up on it well, or you can hold your hand back some distance, and I normally put a lanyard on if I'm doing that. And uh, it does uh, it's a, it does a great job of light chopping, of batoning, and the spine on it's a 90 degree spine. So I've even struck ferro rod from this uh, particular knife. So these are the knives that I have acquired over the last number of years and have used in a variety of settings. And uh, I've put some thought into how I pair them up and I'm very satisfied with the way they complement one another. And I thought I would pass that along for those of you who watch my videos to see and to be able to reflect on. Thank you for um, tuning into my channel and please like, share and subscribe. We'll talk to you on the next video.